Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. I hope you're enjoying your week. I know I am, folks. Let's get on with it. So, the latest of the films that didn't get a wide release in theaters so didn't make much money are found their way onto the internet. The latest of these has got them by Gaslight, and this is based off a 1989 comic from Elseworld that has Batman out. Some of this stuff has been changed to fit an animated film. Because now that they did shoot it in the way that was necessary, that this would need to be. A full-length feature of film <laughs> it was actually if it was just straight adapted. Number one in the animated Batman universe, and again this one is transported back in the 1880s Gotham, and apparently here Batman once again is a vigilante, but of course he is somewhat more technologically advanced. Gotham is being terrorized by Jack the Ripper, which is quite interesting, I guess, because most times you know, hey look. Jack Ripper's over in England. But apparently, considering that the working girls are being attacked and killed, the police are like, well, hey, they're working girls. What else can we do? And basically, one reporter played by, I think it's, it's Celine Kyle, I think it is. If she's not a reporter, then please don't put that in the comment box below and tell me that. She's like, if this were upper class women of, of virtue and, and nobility, you, the police would be all over this. Considering that we're in this alternative universe, there are a whole bunch of Easter eggs here, one of which is that Poison Ivy gets immediately killed off in the first few minutes because she's a working class bar girl or dance hall girl. You know, Hugo Strange is a very disturbed doctor working at Arkham Asylum, I think. The, the two Robins are now just homeless street thugs who work for someone else, apparently. And one scene Batman is trying to investigate, you know, he has a, has, he has a thumbprint in one scene and basically Alfred basically says to him, yeah, thumb pits are not admissible in court because I think this is, it takes a, far, far, it takes a few years into the future for basically thumb pits to be admissible in court. Who knew about that? Celine Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, is now like a high-class actress or dance hall girl who is dating Harvey Dent, who is apparently married in this thing, and that I guess James Gordon is now, I think he's like a certain, He's a veteran of the Civil War, I think, that Gotham is preparing for the World's Fair or about the City of Tomorrow, I'm more or less, I think about it. And now here's the thing, and I say this with all due respect, I'm not a big fan of the animated Batman films outside of one or two titles that I think really go in a really radical direction. I've never been a fan of the animated Batman films. I know a lot of people love, if this really one person I subscribe to, absolutely love the Mask of the Phantasm. I don't. I think that's... I really hate that one. But grant this film this one particular aspect. This is way better than The Killing Joke because The Killing Joke was just an atrocious example of how not to do an animated Batman film. The complaints of animated Batman films, and this is how basically I've always feel about them, is that they're 70 minutes long, they have no real ending. Or that, and I look at them, I just, I watch them, I think to myself, oh look, that could be an animated special on TV. It's like, Here's thing, I love the animated Batman film from the 90s. I also love the 2003 series of Batman for a while I watched. That was also really good. Now, of course, the one thing I will grant this film here is that Bruce Wayne here is voice animated by Bruce Greenwood. That is amazing because I didn't immediately recognize that it was Bruce Greenwood. And that Celine Kyle is voiced by Jennifer Carpenter. That, to me, I'll be honest, she, her voice is unrecognizable in animated form. Here's an interesting thing. I would have loved to see a Netflix series about Gotham in the Victorian era. That would be interesting, because considering that, oh look, it'd be cool to see Batman in the Victorian era, where he's sort of more technologically advanced, or has created more technological advancements than the police can handle, because at least in one scene, he's riding a proto motorbike against a horse and carriage, which I think to myself, hey look, that's actually quite ingenious right there. Think out really the bloody scenes and again you really have nothing here and Bruce Wayne is more rich I guess in the Victorian era good for him apparently in the end what I'm gonna say about Gotham by Gaslight is I'm gonna give this a Netflix train because I think it's yes this is miles better than the killing joke but I've just sort of once again left indifferent about it although there are some good a couple of good scenes plus Decent voice acting by Greenwood and Carpenter. So folks, got them by Gaslight. Have you seen it? What did you think? How would you rank the anime Batman films if you could? 
As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe, and virtue yourself of knowledge. I'll see you next time, folks.